Hey, welcome back to Nilly's Bonsai. Hope you're well. Gonna do a bit of a recap video today um, on two starter trees that I've got. One of which I've worked on. The other one hasn't had anything done to it yet. Um, these were from a challenge that I did with Tony's Bonsai last year. Um, they're both Prunuses. This one here is Prunus Kojo no Maya, um, which most people will be familiar with. It's quite popular in the bonsai world. And this one here, slightly less common, um, well to me at least, Prunus Oshidori. Um, it's kind of like a double flower uh, cherry, slightly larger leaf than the Fuji cherry here, um, but I'm sure we can do something useful with it. Not much has changed with this one really. Um, the, the, the initial kind of large cut that we did there, um, it's healed over quite nicely. There's a lot of little buds along the, the trunk line there. Um, we've obviously grown some new kind of whippy water shoots if you like um, which I think actually will be quite good to put some kind of movement into um, and prepare that for an air layer so while it's bulking up the tree here um, we can utilize it afterwards as well um, so yeah I think that one there we're just going to let it rest up for the season um, feed and water it well and hopefully it will um, bulk up a little bit this year for us the main purpose of this video is to kind of go over this one um, and deal with the root ball, which it did look quite pot down last year um, and it was getting late on in the in the spring and I didn't really want to kind of disturb it too much um, with some of the warmer temperatures we had. It might not have gone down too well. Uh, so I kind of held off, but this definitely is a tangled mess in here. So we'll see what we can achieve out of this. obviously for this kind of root work um, you know there's a small window and depending on the weather and where you are in the you know the country or the world um, you have to kind of read the tree as it were um, and this one here has got some brilliant signs to look out for so as we've said earlier on it's got these swelling buds all over so we can see that sap's being pushed around and the tree is waking up out of its winter dormancy and also if we go down to the roots here which I also look for on my pines when I do any repotting. You can see little white shoots starting to form there as well. So we can see that this tree is well and truly waking up now. Right, so without further ado, let's see what we've got hiding in here. Now you can see there's a lot of roots growing back on themselves. Um, I'm not really too worried about these little fine roots. We'll just cut them off out of the way for now. Worst case scenario, if this is too far gone as it were, um, we'll just air layer it off and start again. But I thought we'll have a little look in here, you never know, there might be something interesting. So as always, we'll start from the top here and just try and find where the roots start flaring out. Cut away a few of these other roots that are just facing upwards here. I think we're finally getting to somewhere near a kind of flare. So we've got something here. So if I can bring that up. See, we've got quite a decent root plane all the way around there. So what looked like quite a mess to start with has actually worked out to be something quite usable. We'll just flick through this bottom here. I just want to reduce this. Quite a healthy little tree, really. And for what seemed ever so pot bound, I did kind of think I'd be air layering this off to get anything off of it. So with very little work there, for what I thought this was going to be like, to be fair, we've actually managed to discover 
in there. Quite a nice root plane. And with the tree actually planted on a slight angle there, this will work really nice. Um, so that's a bonus really, because the next stage of this really was to, to, to cut this off flush at the back here, um, if possible, and then use this to continue on. So we'll get this potted up now into a free draining mix. Um, we wire these down as well while we're there. It will just get it on the right trajectory going forward. Um, and I'm just gonna let this bulk up for a few years, I think then really. Um, yeah, that's good. So all I'll do now is just go through the bottom here. I'm gonna remove anything thick from the bottom. See some thick bits like that, they're no good to us. If we get rid of some of this muck from down here, even that one, I'm gonna chop through. You've got to be careful with your fingers at this point. Velcro secateurs will happily go through a finger. Um, and you see there, we've got that quite flat already as well. I don't really need to push it any further at this point. Um, no, I'm quite happy with that. Right, so we'll get it potted up. I've got a slightly larger pot than what it was originally in. And that's this one here. Um, I've got a fine piece of aluminium wire in there, so if we can kind of secure it in a little bit, we will do, because it's fairly top heavy, um, and we've reduced the root mass. I don't want it moving around in there, it's the best chance it'll have if it's held still. Um, I've just got a well-drained, kind of composty mix, if you like. Um, compost, some kind of mulchy material, um, and some sand and grit. So it's kind of fairly organically rich, um, but still has good drainage. So it should encourage this thing to kind of grow a little bit more in there as well. I'm just gonna plunk it down at the planting angle we want. And if I can use these bits of wire to help pull those odd roots down as well, we will at this point. There we go. If a plant's moving around in there after a repot, that will never help it. Um, you know, become established. There we go. So you see there, it's just going to hold it still in there. It's actually really nice. That's gone well. Um, and I'm just gonna backfill a little bit of this before I try and secure any of the other roots down. I always find it's best if you do major work like this to try and really get soil between the roots, um, especially when you've got a lot of fine roots like that there. Um, it's best to try and make sure the roots don't end up just piled on top of each other and as with anything you know the more care you put into something so those there's a few little roots there now that are actually still showing me they're just upright so we'll just cut a few more of those off and I can see more flat roots underneath you see so even that one there will go back a little bit further I'm just going to cut some little copper wire hooks or pegs if you like. And these will help us make doubly sure them roots are going in the right direction that we want and that will save us more work in the long run while they're still supple and we can manipulate them at the moment to where we want them to go easily and that one there we probably need a longer piece of wire so that there really has gone really really well um, for a pot bound um, nursery plant as it were so we've achieved a really great nabiri 
the trunk line we've actually got a good good start with this as well so we got some nice movement that way it comes back to us and then we've got other options here it gets a little bit nodgily there so maybe we'll have to pick a bud um but that's one for another day the main thing is now the roots are, are sorted out and we just want to thicken up the trunk and probably just take some more air layers and cuttings off it in the meantime as well um so we, and then we can create our own plants you know from from thinner material and achieve more movement or you know get the plant exactly as we want it so i'm just going to backfill now that nothing magic about that part there let's give it a little press around the edge i'm not gonna really compact it in there i find these are better a couple of little taps Well, I hope you've enjoyed that little video um, and maybe if you're new to bonsai, it'll give you a little bit of confidence when dealing with kind of garden centre nursery stock root ball um, that may well have, you know, been a bit pot bound. This this one has worked out particularly well. Um, not all of them will. It's best to have a little poke around in there if you can without damaging the plant, obviously, if you're not going to buy it. Um, but if you can have a look in there and see, you know, it's a bonus. Um, but this one's worked out really quite well. If it hadn't of, we would have just air layered it off because we know this species does air layer quite nicely. And just to kind of end the video on that note, um, I'll show you some previous air layers here that I took off both of these um, starter trees. Within the year, we've now obviously got a handful of them um, for the price of nothing, uh, a little bit of time invested. So that's a Kojo no Maya there. Um, actually, probably a little bit more advanced than the one we just worked on um, and I've got a little flower there looking to come out and I've also got two Oshidori just starting to break bud um, so we know they pulled through the winter as well well I hope you've enjoyed that video um, if you have if you could give it a thumbs up and if you're not a subscriber um, please consider maybe subscribing and I'll see you in the next one thank you